Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this example, I have uh, pasted a, a problem statement and a figure that I developed myself um, just using Microsoft Word. I typed it up, but um, in this example, we are given a 12 foot tall brick wall. So you can see this dimension right here is the 12 feet tall, and it's made of eight inch clay bricks. And so the eight inch clay bricks are represented by these little kind of orangey brown looking uh, squares. And um, we also have uh, the eight inch clay bricks. If you notice in the figure, they're on both sides of the wall. We have unplastered two by four wood studs. So the two by four wood studs are what you see this dark orange rectangle going up the middle of the wall. And we have um, two layers of the one eighth inch thick gypsum board. So these are these kind of white strips that you uh, see here. There's two of them, two layers of them. Um, and it's all shown here in this wall section. So again, what you're looking at is the side view or a side or a section view of a, of a clay brick wall. And again, we've got two layers of clay brick, one on one side of the wall and one on the other side of the wall. And then on the interior of the clay brick, we have two layers of one eighth inch thick gypsum board. And then on the inside of the wall, we have um, uh, two by four unplastered two by four wood studs. OK, and so and the whole wall is is 12 feet uh, high. So um, that's what we're looking at. And we see at the, the base of the wall is connected to some kind of maybe concrete slab. And so the problem says compute the dead load per linear foot acting on the floor slab due to all the materials. So what we're really looking for here is the dead load per linear foot acting on the floor slab here due to the weight of all of these wall materials, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna um, scroll down and you know maybe rewind and pause the video if you need to take a longer look at that problem statement. But I'm gonna say solution here. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw out um, maybe a, a 3D view of kind of what we're looking at. So what we're really looking at is if we have this wall that, you know, we don't know exactly how long it is. So I'm gonna put dot, 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 it keeps on going forever. And so this is gonna be a kind of a 3D view of, of my wall here going on this way. Okay, dot, dot, dot. And then we have it attached to this floor slab that we see here, moving back here, okay? And so <clears throat> what we're being asked to calculate is the dead load, the, the linear dead load per foot that this wall is putting on the slab. So this is essentially what we're being asked to calculate. W dead here. Uh, let me see, I like using capital letters. W dead, capital D, with units of maybe PLF, pounds per linear foot, or you know KLF if you want to. Okay, going on and on. And so the the thing to notice here is um, this is a, a nice 3D sketch. Well, I don't know how nice it is, but it's a 3D sketch of this wall. So. If you're looking at this wall section, the wall is coming in and out of the screen at you. The length of the wall is coming in and out of the screen at you, okay? And you don't know exactly how long the wall is, but you do know how tall it is. It's 12 feet tall. So back on our 3D sketch, um, the height of the wall would maybe be right here. That's that 12 foot high uh, wall. Okay. so. To actually calculate the dead load of all these materials, we're going to reference, we're going to say ref for reference, ASCE 716, and we're going to end up using one of those tables in the commentary, table C3 something, okay? Now remember, there are two handy tables in the commentary section of ASC 7. There's C3.1-1A. And then there's C 3.1-2. And 3.1-1A um, gives minimum dead loads based on PSF. And 3.1-2 um, gives densities or unit weights. 
So um, take a second, maybe pause the video, open up your copy of ASC 7, look at these two tables, and you tell me what you think, um, which table you think would be the most appropriate to pull some values from. Okay, so pause the video. Okay, so let's say you've unpaused it. Um, I would say table C3.1-1A um, gives the needed values, okay? So we're gonna use that table, all right? <clears throat> so if you enter in to uh, that table, that's gonna be given in terms, so we'll, we'll, we'll put a parenthesis here, in terms of PSF, all right? So from that table, um, I can go ahead and, and I'm gonna use the letter Q here. I'm gonna say Q studs. These are the two by four studs. Again, looking at this table, um, I'm pulling this value out of uh, approximately the um, middle, up, uh, right above the middle of page 427 in the ASC 716 commentary. But Q studs, I get four PSF. Okay, so take a second, pause the video, make sure you can know, you know, see where you can find that four PSF. Um, I'm also gonna get Q of the gypsum board. Okay, gypsum board is kind of like drywall or sheet rock, by the way. So that gypsum board, again, from the same table, you'll find that that's 0.55 PSF. And then you can get Q of the clay brick from the same table. And um, it's eight inch clay brick. So that table gives you 79 PSF as the minimum dead load uh, self weight of this material. Again, pause the video, open up your AC 716 because you need to know where to find these values at, okay? Now again, <clears throat> looking back in the wall, uh, at the wall section, you see we have some double layers of both the clay brick and the eighth inch gypsum board, okay? So um, what do we need to do since we have um, double layers of that? Well, we're gonna need to multiply the weight of the clay brick and the gypsum board by two because again, we have two layers of it, okay? so. Eventually, we're gonna end up uh, multiplying these by two. So let's go ahead and piece it all together. We're gonna say W dead, W dead as a uniform load in PLF is gonna be Q studs plus two times Q gypsum board plus two times the Q of the clay brick okay now you want this uniform dead load in plf or klf you want this as a line load these values be careful with your units these values are given in pounds per square foot okay pounds per square foot so how do we get from psf to plf well we're going to need to multiply all of these uh, these things that we're adding together by some length, okay? And by multiplying values that have units of PSF by a, a length in feet, you will end up with PLF as your result. So what length are we gonna multiply by? Well, the 12 feet, okay? Because again, the weight of this material in terms of a force divided by area is P is in PSF, but if you multiply it by this length factor, you're gonna end up pulling out the 12 foot dimension. Uh, you're gonna pull out the dimension line of 12 feet and you're gonna be just left with uh, PLF going along the length of the wall. And remember looking at the wall section, this wall is coming in and out of the page or in and out of the board at you. So we're gonna multiply all this by the height of the wall. And so substituting these values in, I'll show them a little bit of work here. W dead equals four, and I'm gonna expand these units, pounds per square foot times, uh, or sorry, plus two times 0.55 pounds per square foot plus two times uh, 79 pounds per square foot 
all times 12 feet. So uh, here we'll use the FT symbol instead of the apostrophe FT. And so you can see that, you know, these feet cancel with one of these feet here. And finally, you'll have a W dead uh, altogether of about 1,000. Um, 960 PLF or 1.96 KLF. Now, if you punch these numbers in um, one at a time, you can make a note here and we can say note the clay brick contributes the most to the wall weight and that kind of makes sense we're talking about clay bricks here that's the 79 psf times two so let's say you have a situation where your um you as the engineer or, or a contractor uh tells you you need to lighten up this wall this wall's too heavy um well first thing you can look at is how how heavy these bricks are and ask yourself, is there something you can do about the heaviness of the bricks? Can you use a different kind of brick? Do you really need two layers of bricks? Um, so from a constructability perspective, you can always go back and, and look at your materials and make adjustments if you are violating some kind of uh, constraint or, or, or you know something is heavier than you want it to be. So that's just a little side note uh, to make note of, of these little uh, things. So that concludes this example. Thanks for watching.